Hello, hope everyone is doing well. I had interaction with lots of doctors and, you know, practiced with them also during mocks. And one common thing that I've noticed is time management. Everyone had lots of things to say, but they ran out of time. And as a result, some concern that you asked in data gathering stays unanswered. Not only that, but some of the important things that should be said and discussed are not there. At the same time, the doctor do realizes that they are short of time, so they rush into management and just try to finish it as soon as possible without involving the patient, like doing two-way conversation, etc. And maximum IPS, I say, is shown in the management part. So I always say that management is not four marks, but it's eight marks. Hence, time management comes into play. And by just managing it nicely in an organized way, we can achieve maximum marks. And at the end of consultation, when you walk out of the cubicle, you'll feel confident. So, well, that's another thing we can talk about, but later someday, uh, how to be and how to sound confident in the exam. Uh, this is a game changer, believe me, you know, because they want confident doctors, not those doctors who are not sure of anything. So let's not go into the tangent and do justice to the topic uh, that we are here for, uh, which is time management. In the report card, there's a section called time management. If you fail to complete the task in time, the examiner marks you in that. So that, so that becomes important to us to know how to save ourselves from that and understand the mistakes and correct them. So let's begin. The way we do in medicine is we, you know, identify the triggers or red flags, you know, and, and then address the issues. So we will go by the same. So let's see the mistakes that, you know, I, I could identify and we can, you know, correct it. So let's begin. Uh, first one is asking relevant questions. So we have eight minutes in exam. Mistake that we make is, you know, we take history for six minutes and just two minutes for the management. That's good, but it has been taken in a wrong sense, you know, I believe. Academies say that, you know, start management at two minutes well. Well, that's what they tend to say, or I can modify it and say that, you know, that's the limit. That's not the ideal time. But that's the limit that by two minutes well, you should have already started talking about the management. So why this happens is, you know, doctors dive deep into the data gathering, which is not required. You know, they ask lots of questions. What is required from doctor is to take focused history. Even it means asking relevant questions in the data gathering. I've noticed doctors asking psychosocial, what do you do for a living? How are things at home? You know, when the question stem says that you are in A&E, in emergency, and patient has presented with acute headache two, three hours ago. So do you think it's logical? I mean, I, I don't think so. It's logical to ask these questions. So I should say, you know, do, do you ask this, this question at, at your hospital, the same situation? The answer is no. Then, then why, you know, uh, doctors do ask all these questions in, you know, in lab two? It's called data gathering for a reason. We gather relevant data which we can use it later on in management. What's the logic of asking question which is of no use to, to you or the patient? That doesn't make sense. And if you tend to take extensive history and due to lack of time management, you couldn't complete it nicely. You won't get four, and four out of four in data gathering. That's very important thing. Even if you have asked everything, lots of questions, but you couldn't bring that up in management, uh, you know, that's like, you know, you'll, you, you won't get four out of four in data gathering. You'll get it when you have asked relevant questions and you have used that in management. So in this way, people just waste their time gaining nothing. You know, at the end, you'll end up scoring two, one, one, that's four. That's clearly failed. So cause mostly passing marks are five and above. So what we can do here is ask relevant questions. We need to filter out things that are not required. Example, in counseling stations during the mocks, I saw that doctors are ruling out differentials, which is not required here, as it's a counseling station where the disease has already been diagnosed. Another example most commonly seen is medicine stations where we need to ask about meptosa and you know lifestyle questions. We have to filter these questions. 
the mnemonic mafosa desa is made for us to remember easily and not necessarily to ask in each and every station and each and everything we need to filter out those things you know which are relevant to that particular station so do do you think for instance you know do you think asking about travel history is important in a patient presenting with pain and swelling in hand is it i don't think so it's relevant so you know we have to figure it out where which question is important and relevant which will help us save time and gain marks that's what we are here for so asking relevant questions it is is very very important that's why by just you know fixing this thing you will um, you will save time for management and you can score more so let's see the next thing um which which is the second mistake is that you know they don't take history good history of the presenting complaint and you know because they don't take the take good history of presenting complaint they ask they tend to ask lots of differential questions you know to to just know what's the di what diagnosis is it the, so you know if if you tend to take good history of presenting complaint you will know what the patient has exactly a patient comes to the hospital to get himself treated they don't hide they will tell you whatever they you know they feel example patient has complained of headache since 4 months people don't even complete the socrates history they don't dive into deep into you know asking all the uh, what we call it uh the, the socrates questions the pain questions so which which is so important you know had you asked these questions and explored it you'd have known what's the cause and which disease is it so exploring the presenting complaint nicely you know uh, becomes very important in this regard uh third most common mistake that i've seen is you know that asking lots of differentials as we talked about previously uh, for each and every complaint just ask you know three or four maximum differentials not more than that differentials we have to rule out the most serious condition that can kill a patient for you know for headache it could be you know subarachnoid hemorrhage meningitis head trauma stroke so you know ask just one two questions for all these differentials and questions in differentials are you know closed ended questions so questions and like the question, you know we ask for presenting complaint where mostly it's open ended so you can ask is it the worst headache of your life you know do you have any fever or flu like symptoms or any rashes of the body for meningitis so any weakness in arms or legs you know these are these are the questions you can ask as a as a differential question um for a patient presenting with headache this is to give an impression to the examiner that we are safe doctors who rules out serious conditions and knows how to rule it out there are, there are just you know 8 minutes remember we cannot continue to ask differentials i've seen like doctors have asking differentials you know continuously like one by you know 1 2 3 4 like which all these things are not required you know for every complaint just three or four differentials and one or two questions uh, for each that's that's it you know you you will save a lot of time Uh, for your management you will be able to talk more in management and you will be able to you know you won't rush into uh, complete just completing the station and you'll be able to answer all the concerns that the patient has and you know you'll end up scoring more just by focusing on these little things let's uh, see the next uh, thing um the next another thing is to be thorough with the theory knowledge of this exam so what what i've seen is you know this this exam has two parts like the preparation has two parts one is knowing all the stations you know very well what what the task is and what what's required from you and what to do and what not all the nhs guidelines the second is practicing it so unless and until you are not thorough with with the theory knowledge of this exam you cannot apply it to your practice so having uh, you know thorough with with this theory knowledge of this exam you know many doctors they ask relevant questions but they tend to you know take a lot of time thinking before asking this is also one of the common uh, uh, you know things that i have seen you know 
this this doesn't look good doesn't look confident enough that you have to process the information every time you know they, they ask one question and patient gives them some important information and at that time they are thinking about what should i ask next you know and in that they miss the information given by the patient and it could be so important leading to something or and imagine it could be so awkward that patient just said something and you ask the same question again so mm-hmm. you know examiner will mark you for listening and repo and your confidence also goes down when the patient will say you know well doctor i just said it so be thorough and well versed with the theory part so you should know like you know if, if the station is headache so what all questions you should be asking what's what's the was how to dive deep into the socrates history and how to you know identify uh you know rule, ruling out other differential so you know when you are well versed with the theory knowledge you won't you won't be thinking about you know what question should i be, should i ask uh, you know while the patient is speaking so you should know what what questions to ask in the stations or you know what questions to ask when a patient present with xyz complain you know all the relevant questions so having good theory knowledge is uh, number 4 and uh, another one let's see yes another the on number 5 it's understanding the task Uh, this is so so important Re- read read the question stem carefully and nicely and understand what's required from you where are you you know they each and every question stem will will say you are in a and e you are in gp you are in you know surgery department or whatever so you know it's very important where are you and what's the main task each and every station believe me each and every station has one task that and the examiners are expecting you to complete that one task so so now ident- identifying that is very important understanding the task you know will keep you on track and you'll know where to lead if you don't understand the task nicely you know you will you will be lost when when you are, when you enter the cubicle you know you won't know what questions to ask and what's expected from you so you know understanding task will you know help you keep you on track and you'll know where to lead and what to do next you won't feel lost whether it's a counseling station or a pure medicine station or an ethical scenario many a times you know doctor misses they miss, they miss it and they take ethical scenario as medicine you know once once it happened uh, during our online mock a case of you know chronic fatigue syndrome where the you know where the question says that the system has crashed there are no records of the patient you know and many of them thought it's a medical error scenario so they approached it as a medical uh, you know error scenario uh, kind of station well that wasn't they so they end up approaching you know a, in a station in a wrong way only to realize it later when the patient would ask them something and it would be you know it would struck the you know strike them oh that's a different station and the bell rings move on to the next station you know so so it's it it would be so uh, kind of awkward situation and you know you would have lost the station Uh, by that time so in this way you can save yourself by identifying the kind of station so reading the task nicely uh, you know giving the time uh, you you have one and half minute so utilize that time understanding the task what's uh, you know uh, where are you what's expected from you and what all information is being is, is given so you know these these are very important things uh, five things that that i've realized uh, you know uh, which can save um you know many doctors from you know uh you know saving their time and managing their time in a in a nicer way so that you know they have more time for management more time to show their ips skills and talk to the patient because in the exam because any you know if if you are talking to the patient you know the patient will also say something they will give you some inputs so 8 minutes believe me 8 minutes uh, you know the it it runs very fast in the exam you do, you, you know you won't even realize it so always i you know um uh, so overall you know let's see the overview of this session like uh, first one is asking relevant questions in the history second one is exploring presenting complain nicely so you know you don't ask lots of differentials to know the diagnosis what exactly is happening to the patient so explore the presenting complain whatever the patient says you know explore it nicely uh, don't ask too many differentials it's not required just three four differentials it's fine you know most serious uh, serious ones uh, for for each and every um, complain 
and have good theory knowledge and understand the task nicely so these are the take away take home points uh, from this session you know just five points uh, you know few important things that can help you pass also so there are some things what i would suggest that you know would help you is try practicing with a 6.5 or 7 minute timer don't don't use 8 minute timer um, uh, try to practice with 6.5 or 7 because you know th this will set you in the exam you know ex as i said the time flies and you won't even know so better to practice with 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 the with the limited time which will you know set the clock in your brain and train yourself to complete a station within time so yes um uh if you have any questions uh, related to the topic you can can let me know you know try to explain a bit more can you please give an example of how to present a case of data gathering examination and then management like how would you present it um okay okay i will give that okay let me let me share the screen once again i hope you are able to see this like i prepared this flash card like how to approach you know dementia talking to relative so as you can see here uh you know like this one appreciate the relative for coming in and acknowledge the challenges they face so you know just appreciate the patient uh, the the relative like i appreciate you you came today for our mother you know your mother and thank you for doing this and all this and then you know in in this in this one you know the the patient is having dementia and she is kind of confused and you know the daughter is um uh, kind of uh, you know is 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 concerned about her mother like suddenly how you know all these things happen so first of all you know when 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 there is relative we uh, we we appreciate the daughter you know so we build the rapport initially so we appreciate the daughter for coming in and then we rule out other um other causes of confusion so you know we rule out other causes of confusion like any head injury or fever vomiting you know we just ask these questions very quickly all the uh, things that can cause confusions any medication she is taking or any burning sensation while passing urine you know, sometimes uti can also cause this so and specific questions for dementia like for how long has she been diagnosed with dementia how she managed how she able, at home able to do activities of daily living is she able to eat and drink well does she do things independently or need your help you know see these are the like very relevant uh, to the you know station uh, so in this way you can ask the history and collect the data also ice is important here because you know the daughter is worried so we will ask about what is your main worry and then questions for relative you know because the daughter is coming in we have to consider that here there are two patients we have to manage one is daughter and one is her mo mo mother so we ask you know first the questions for her mom to rule out other causes of confusion and all this this is a general scheme for any dementia station this is not a kind of specific one this i just made it for you know a general if any dementia station comes where a you know daughter or any relative comes in uh, how to handle that so specific questions for relative you know what do you do for a living and how and do you think you know how are you coping and are there any specific difficulties that that you are facing those these are you know kind of important kind of questions and asking the past medical history as we you know know allergies are important family history of medical condition is important because dementia can run in you know families so yes uh, this way and like at the end we give the diagnosis and you know kind of management and we you know th this is like kind of two way uh, conversation that's happening here making them understand that it's a progressive disease and symptoms can get worse with time in late stages patient may not be able to take care of themselves and lose the ability to communicate so th th this one is you know where a patient is already having dementia but you know the patient is kind of uh, progressing having a uh, you know progressing to another stage so you know daughter is kind of or or the relative is kind of uh, concerned so we address all these issues in this way i hope you know we we can have this have the session uh, some day later on but uh, you know uh, it's i think you know it, it will take more time if we discuss uh, 
these stations. So I hope you you get a gist about you know what I'm trying to say, like just by this asking relevant questions, uh, you know, to for to the relative, or you know, to the patient. Uh, 